Today we will discuss about pressure. In this chapter, we will consider an important class of problem in which the fluid is either at rest or moving in such a manner that there is no relative motion between adjacent particles. In both instances, there will be no shearing stress in the, fluid, in the fluid and the only forces that develop on the surface of the particle will be due to the uh, pressure. The absence of shearing stress greatly simplifies the analysis and there are no shearing stress present in a fluid at rest. So in this chapter, we will discuss about pressure, one of the important elements in a fluid static and fluid dynamic. However, to simplify this one, we uh, neglect the existence of shearing stress to, make sure, uh, to let our analysis become easier. Before we go further, we would like to discuss about the, uh, the idea of pressure at one single point. The term pressure is used to indicate the normal force per unit area at a given point acting on a given plane within the fluid mass of interest. The equation of motion, which is Newton's second law, F equal MA, in the Y and Z direction are respectively used in this calculation. So and then I would like to introduce to you about Pascal law for pressure at a point. By considering the equilibrium of a small fluid element in the form of a triangular prism surrounding a point in the fluid as shown below, a relationship can be established between the pressure Px here in the x direction, Py in the y direction and Ps which is normal to any plane inclined at any angle to the horizontal at this point. So this statement is actually described above. We try to evaluate what happened to a one single point, what happened uh, to the pressure act on one single point. So we assume that our point is in this shape because we could evaluate in terms of x direction, in terms of y direction, and in, in terms of inclined plane like this. So and then, if the fluid is at rest, Px will act at right angles to the plane ABFE. I think you could see in this diagram, so this is ABFE, so this is the plane, and pressure in x direction will act perpendicular to the plane ABFE. So and then uh, the pressure at uh, y axis, so here, will act to the perpendicular to this surface, so which is it, the surface of CDEF. And then the pressure for this incline, so it will act perpendicular, means 90 degree uh, to the surface. So the area is A, B, C, D. As you could see here, this is A, B, C, and D here. So and then uh, we will evaluate the forces act on the element. So uh, first we uh, evaluate the forces in x direction. So what we need to do is we try to calculate all the forces in x direction. So for sure we have uh, a pressure here, a Px here. So mean we could calculate the force at x direction can be calculated easily as pressure time area. And according to this diagram, we could write the pressure as Px and the area here is dy times dz because dy is the height of this one and dz is the width of this plane so and then we have uh, a pressure at this uh, inclined surface and this pressure can be transformed or can be split into two component force which is the x component and y component and then the pressure for x component here will create force at 
x direction so we could write the fro the force from the inclined surface but uh, in x direction can be calculated as ps time the area of a b c d times sine theta so the sine theta here is actually connected directly to the ps here to to split or to calculate the component of pressure at x direction so and then according to this triangle we could find that the sine theta here so this is theta the sine theta here is equal to dy over ds and then we substitute the, the sine theta here with dy ds so we have this term so and then we could simplify the ds here so we could write the force for inclined surface in x direction can be calculated as ps times dz times dy so and then we know that uh, we have force in this direction from left to the right and uh, the we have a component force here from right to the left so and then in equilibrium we b we could say that the left side force must be equal to right side force so we we, we write like this one so this term is actually taken from this and this one so we equalize these two forces so and then we could say that because the area is the same dx dz so we could say that px is equal to ps so mean at this uh, moment so we could say that at one single point here the pressure that acts on x axis is actually same with the pressure that acts on incline uh, direction like this now we evaluate the force in y direction so this is we have a y component that are the the pressure that acts on y axis so we could calculate the force here as py times dx dz so dx is the length of this one and the dz is actually the width of this plane so mean this is the area of this one so and then for this component we need to calculate the component of y direction for the inclined force so we could write like this okay we could write like this so ps times area abcd times cos theta and then we could replace the cos theta as dx ds so according to this triangle so and then we could uh, simplify the force the uh, the uh, what the force of inclined surface uh, on y direction as ps times dz times dx And then we believe that even though this is a very small uh, molecule, a small area, so the mass is still exists for this uh, element. So, and then the gravity will act in this direction. So, mean this is the opposite direction for the y axis here, for the y direction. Uh, at the bottom so we need to calculate the weight of the molecule so the weight w is equal to mg and then we could replace the mass here by using the idea of rho is equal to mass over volume and then we could say that mass is equal to rho times volume that's why we could say that weight here is equal to rho g and volume and then the volume here can be calculated as 1 over 2 dx dy dz it is because the dx so and then we have a dy and with dx here is the volume for the rectangular cube here so and then we divide by 2 because our element is actually half of that rectangular box so and then in equilibrium we found that all the forces in y direction must be equal so we have a force from bottom to the top and then this we have component of y direction from top to the bottom and the weight is act from top to the bottom like this so we could write this equation in equilibrium state
So and then, because we are evaluating one single element, so to simplify the uh, calculation, we assume that the volume is very, very small. So we neglect the existence of the volume, means dx, dy, and dz is negligible in this comparison. So means so we could neglect this term. So and then we could say that from this equation, so we could neglect, we could cancel the dx and dz here. So and then we could say that the PY is equal to PS. So and then if we merge our conclusion from X and Y direction, we could write the pressure at X direction is equal to pressure at Y direction and it is equal to pressure at S direction. So according to this uh, mathematical uh, solution, so we found we could say that the pressure at a point in a fluid at rest is independent of direction so means that in one single point uh, in a fluid so the the pressure is actually act this oh, the the in in same uh, value at any direction we could we can conclude that the pressure at a point in a fluid at rest or in motion is independent of direction as long as there are no shearing stresses present. This important result is known as Pascal law named in honor of Blaise Pascal 1623 to 1662. And then I would like to discuss about how to get a uh, equation to calculate the pressure for incompressible fluid. So here, please uh, be careful because we discuss about incompressible fluid or in simple words, we discuss about pressure for liquid. So let's say uh, we have uh, a cylinder like this and this cylinder is filled with water and then we need to calculate what is the pressure at the bottom part here. So the idea is same with the previous idea. We start our calculation by calculating the forces act on the cylinder. So for sure we have x and y direction. So we go for the x direction first. So for x direction, we found that if we have pressure here and this pressure will act on the surface here. So we'll give us force in x direction. And then because we have another pressure at, at the left here, so multiply with the same cross-sectional area here and then it will give us another uh, unit, another amount of force. So means because in equilibrium, the, the, these two forces will act in opposite direction. So means that the resultant of the force occur on x direction is equal to zero. So means we could neglect the calculation or the existence in x direction. Because there is force act on x direction, but the resultant force acts on x direction is equal to zero because the amount of forces in x in left and right side is equal. Okay, now we go for evaluate the forces in y direction. So here at the bottom here, you know, we have uh, a liquid here. So for sure we have a uh, pressure at the bottom. So pressure time area will give us force. So this we, ha we have a force act from act from bottom to the top like this one. So and then at the surface here, so this is the surface means the surface of liquid uh, and what liquid and gas liquid to atmospheric pressure so in certain uh, in certain uh, situation we show the atmospheric pressure or we show the surface of liquid by writing a triangular mark here so this is means the borderline between the liquid and the gas i mean uh, the atmospheric pressure so because at this uh, moment, we 
assume that atmospheric pressure is equal to zero so means that we have pressure act on this surface so then we could calculate the force but the force here okay is equal to zero because we assume that p atm is equal to zero okay and then because the the fluid itself here has weight so we need to calculate the weight so the weight here is equal to rho g and volume okay so and then we need to write uh, an equation in equilibrium so we found that we have force in this direction and the weight is act from top to bottom like this direction okay and then remember the force that act on this surface is equal to zero because the patm in this situation can be assumed as equal to zero so we could write the equation like this one so we could say that okay the pressure here is p time a pressure time area so we have force so and then it is equal to rho g and volume so we have this one that's why we could write an equation like this pressure time area is equal to rho g and volume so we could simplify the volume as rho g a and h so i think you could uh understand about this equation so the volume means the volume of this liquid so means that to calculate the volume of this liquid it is equal to the cross-sectional area a here times the height of this one so this is h and this is an a so and then we could simplify because we have an a here so we could cancel out the value of a here so finally we could say that to calculate the pressure for incompressible fluid so means to calculate the pressure for liquid can be calculated by using this equation so the equation to calculate the pressure is p equal to rho g and h and then i hope you could understand how to use how to uh, substitute this equation the rho here is the density of the liquid so and then the g is the gravity acceleration and the h here is the y direction y direction length or height so means that you need to take the y direction or y axis height from this point to the free surface so free surface here is the borderline or the surface where the liquid meets the atmospheric pressure so this is the definition of the pressure in incompressible fluid okay so please remember the equation for the pressure is p equal to rho gh